off Saint here, and I have a few new toys that I want to show you. First off is the Scar L. This is a Wii gas blowback closed bolt system. Um, stock comes up with flip sights, so those are really nice. Also extremely adjustable. You can raise it by adjusting right here. You can also adjust it from left to right, depending on uh, how you want to set this up. It's really great because it's an ambidextrous weapon. There's a mag release on both sides of the weapon, along with fire selector switch. Um, magazine holds 32 rounds, so it's extremely realistic. The buttstock is a six position retractable buttstock. And it also has an adjustable cheek rest. So for whatever type of situation that you need to be in, you can adjust this weapon on the fly, right there in the field, and you're good to go. Best thing about this, CQB environment, pop this down, and then you have a short stock, or no stock, so that you can really get this weapon around in some corners, do some damage with this guy. So, I just picked this up uh, a few weeks ago, I've given it a brief run through. Um, a few things that I really like about this weapon is the amount of rise rails that are on it. You have a large rise rail on the top, um, it's also numbered, so it's a great way to keep track of where you put your optics, um, especially if you're using different optics for different types of environments, um, for outdoor play or CQB play. Also, um, the side rails are great for mounting lasers, tactical lights, anything like that. And you even have bottom rails, so if you need that foregrip or the grenade launcher, that's another great thing that you can pop on there. Um, since this is a gas blowback system, as you can see, you pull the slide back, it exposes the inner barrel, pop it forward, you're ready to go. Um, there's a few things that I really like about this so far, and there's a few things I don't like about this so far. One of them is the fact that the stock hand grip, this pistol style hand grip, isn't exactly comfortable, but you can replace it with any M4 style hand grip, so that's a great thing. Um, the other thing that I really don't care for about this weapon is the fact that the lower receiver is an ABS plastic instead of a full metal like the upper receiver is. Um, but as far as that's concerned, everything on this weapon feels really sturdy, and it feels like you can really take a beating out there, so you don't have to be worried about dropping it or bumping it or, uh, you know, any kind of um, exterior wear on this weapon isn't going to be a big problem. Um, you know, you might chip some paint or whatever, but as, as far as that's concerned, the weapon is really, really sturdy. Nothing feels like it's going to come out of place, just shake it around and... You know, there's a few little loose things as far as the bolt is concerned. Um, the sights are a little wobbly, but, you know, that's expected because they're smaller pieces. Everything else on this weapon is completely sturdy. Even the stock, this thing's not going anywhere. So, that being said, I would actually recommend this weapon to most new players and even some veteran players that are out there because of the fact that it's built like an M4. It has M4... Um, style innards as far as the gas blowback system is concerned um, and you know it's just got the weight of an M4 to it so any players that are looking for an M4 style weapon um, you know you don't exactly have to get the M4 the SCAR L is considerably better I would actually say because of its versatility and because this particular weapon um, you know is is actually lighter or similar weight, so, you know, weight distribution, mounting options, everything like that is great for any new or veteran players. So with that out of the way, I also have a Echo One E90. This weapon's actually been converted to Dean's plug already, but um, this weapon actually fires about 60 rounds a minute being converted to Dean's. And uh, I've seen a lot of people say that the battery compartment on this is actually really small. In fact, I found that it's 
pretty large, actually. I fit a 1600 uh, ma um, drumstick battery in this. So there's actually quite a lot of room in this buttstock for batteries. It's a little tight, but there's plenty of room. You can also get special P90 style um, custom batteries. They're kind of in an L shape. Um, those you can get up to 16 ma too. Um, I've also fitted this particular weapon with a Tasco red dot, which is a real red dot, and a matrix tracing unit. The tracing unit also doubles as a suppressor, and the nice thing about this tracing unit is it's not on all the time. There's actually a button that you press on the uh, closest part of the cylinder here, and you can hear it turn on if you listen real closely. It has kind of an electrical hum when you turn it on. So, um, that being said, let's get to the Tasco Red Dot before we get into the weapon. The Tasco Red Dot I picked up actually at a Walmart for roughly $30 to $35. Um, it has 11 different optical powers for it as far as the uh, dot itself. So, it can get fairly bright and you can customize it to whatever you need it to be. You can adjust the windage and the altitude on this site as well. Um, because it's a real red dot, it doesn't move like a lot of the imitation red dots do for airsoft guns. But that being said, it still moves relative to your position. The reason I bought it was because the Echo 1 E90 doesn't actually have iron sights on it. And I needed something with really good eye relief. So that's why I got the Tasco and... Let's be honest, it looks badass. The next thing I'd like to mention about this gun is the fact that it's actually gravity fed via these mags. These mags slide in like so and you pop it down. When you pop it down, um, there's a little notch inside this mag and the BBs just drop inside when you fire it, keeping the rate of fire extremely high because it's gravity fed. Fire selector switch is located right here. There's three selections. There's automatic, one round shot, and of course safety. Um, so as far as the weight of this weapon, it's extremely light, very maneuverable. You can definitely get around your corners with it. Um, that being said, having the tracing unit on it um, does make the barrel a little bit longer, um, and you can't actually put a longer inner barrel in because the tracing unit needs the entire unit to light up the BBs. So if you do want to get a suppressor um, and a tracing unit, there are a few different options you could do, and one would be uh, buying a body conversion kit that allows for M4 mags, and some M4 mags, you can actually install the tracing unit in the M4 mag. Um, but as far as that, you can't actually put a larger inner barrel in because of the tracer unit since it needs the entire tracer unit to light the BBs. Of course you have the face slide on this. Um, there are actually three mounting rails on it. They're a little hard to see. Of course you have the top rail, which I have my red dot attached to right now. And then you have this little side rail on both sides. Um, there's just one notch on it, so it's mainly for mounting laser sights or tactical lights. The next thing I really like about this weapon the fact that it's very ergonomic in its design. It's very comfortable. It doesn't feel familiar as far as most weapons are concerned, but it has the feel that it's comfortable enough that you could run around with this for eight hours and not feel like it's too heavy or you need that forward grip assistance like you would on any M4 um, counterparts. You know, as far as that's concerned, I would also recommend this to any new players or any veteran players but that being said the gearbox is a little tricky in this one because it's a bullpup design everything's in the back so you know the gearbox is going to be a little more, more difficult to work on for the newer players so um, this is more geared toward a veteran player and the, the great thing about this weapon is it's an uncommon weapon most bullpup designs that are, I've seen out there are generally the British LA-85 or whatever. Um, and that's more because it's the British standard assault rifle. 
Um, just basically like the M4, it's always out there. It's always going to be seen. P90 isn't exactly a um, weapon that's been issued throughout militaries, but it's a weapon that actually a lot of militaries do have the option of using. That being said, I really like this weapon because it's light, because it's versatile, and because it's uh, so unique. Um, so let's get into uh, a few things that I'd like to really mention about both of these weapons that really just stand out to me the most. Let's start with the Wii Scar. The biggest thing I've noticed about this weapon is weight. Um, that's kind of a big factor to me because when you're running around all day, whether it be field or CQB environment, it's a heavy weapon. This weapon weighs at least 25 pounds because of the full metal upper receiver. Um, granted, it is a gas blowback, so it's going to be a little bit on the heavy side compared to any AEG. But um, as far as that's concerned, the weapon is very well balanced. Um, it doesn't feel too heavy up front or too heavy in back. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely pick one of these up. Now let's uh, get into the P90 here. There's a lot of weight in the back, which definitely counteracts the weight in the front that I've added due to my tactical options up front. But, um, weight aside, you know, like I said, the weapon is small. It's definitely geared more towards a CQB style environment rather than any uh, field environment. But, I'm sure it can hold its own in any field, given the right upgrades. Um, if you wanted to upgrade this for field play, I would definitely recommend probably popping in a 150M spring, and I would probably pop in a 6mm tight bore barrel, just for some accuracy and FPS increasing. Um, that's really all I can tell you about these weapons, since I actually haven't tested them yet. Um... I don't have a Dean's charger yet, and I don't have gas for the SCAR. But, I've seen the SCAR chronoed, and uh, it's running about 35 rounds a minute. And, you know, it doesn't have to be fast, but it's accurate. So, accuracy is key um, in a lot of these weapons. And the P90 doesn't really have that accuracy. It's got the speed to it. Um, so the, the P90 is more of a CQB spray and pray type weapon, whereas the SCAR is more of a field take your shots type of weapon. Um, both can actually be geared towards um, a DMR, which is one thing that I really like and it's great about both of these weapons, is they have the options to be what they need to be for you. You can totally customize them for what you need. Um, if you pick up one of these E90s and you really don't like spending the 12 to $16 on magazines for it, um, there is a conversion kit for it. Uh, it changes the look of the body. Um, it looks a little space agey for me, but it makes it accept M4 mags. So if you're a player that likes having the P90, likes having the rate of fire, but hates spending all that money on getting the specific magazines for it, you can get that conversion kit. It's about $125. But in the long run, it'll probably save you some money since you probably already have M4 magazines. So, that being said, I'd like to see what you guys think about these weapons. And if you guys have any suggestions on any other weapons that you'd like to see me do, thanks for watching.